6K footage, editing, and of course, 120 gigabytes of RAM. We're gonna run some tests and then talk a little bit. Let's start. Welcome back to another video. My name is Nikos. Today we are looking at 128 gigabytes of RAM, some stats, and of course, editing with 6K. Is the big jump from 64 to 128 worth it? Maybe you're at 32 gigabytes and you're thinking, should I buy 64? Should I go to 128 with my new system? Or if you're just upgrading and you're just kind of sitting there having some issues. Now, overall, the set of videos I've made have been moving around based on questions. So this is why the structured approach isn't fully there. However, I'm gonna be making a full video just to recap this idea of 128 versus 64 with all our findings as we're moving along. And in this case, we're looking at rendering and how fast Premiere Pro is taking. The questions have been around Premiere Pro and this is why I've stuck to doing this kind of a test so you can see that difference. And uh, at the end of the day, you can look and compare with what you're doing and be able to make a more informed decision. Overall, the question just becomes, well, what is best for time, energy, and money? And that's what we're going to be looking at through this video. So 128 gigabyte test results coming up. And before we start looking at the numbers, I did do these tests in both GPU accelerated and non-GPU accelerated. However, in the title, I had GPU accelerated and it really was non-GPU accelerated. My mistake. I will leave a comment in that video. And of course, uh, as I'm working on this everything is non-gpu accelerated the 6k footage comes from black magic i was doing some tests with the bra extension now when you download these 6k clips they are in bra format so you have to use an extension they have for premiere pro and then you're able to uh, import these and use them testing wise i went ahead and just uh, created a 29 second clip just did light color on it just so i could see how it all flows now you can see when uh, you are using 6k and it is on a 4k screen of course but you, it, it's nice and smooth i, I can't complain everything's running nice this is on a 3060 ti so you you're really like you know you, you wouldn't know if you had a 3080 or 3090 or card in here this is where we're at and this is now running it's nice and smooth if we look at the other clips i use i put them together and literally what i did here was just color code them again very nice very quick and just wanted to make a second longer video that we're going to render and basically what we see here is uh, two uh, different types of videos one is more cpu intensive one is more gpu intensive i'm doing this 4k on the 64 example so we can establish a baseline we do see the drop in the xmp and it being enabled and then it kind of just stabilizes in both cases do we see an increase at 3800 with the cpu intensive yes but it's not like drastic. It, these are seconds we're talking about. It, it, it's not life-changing whatsoever. Now, when we continue on to see the same videos with 128 gigabytes, we do see this drop again. And then we start to see more of a decline as we get to that 3600. And this plays a critical role because you got to really think about this. Should this be happening at the end of the day? In, in the CPU intensive, it is happening. And, and that really plays a critical factor when you're thinking about uh, what is the overall expectation that you want from 128 gigabytes versus 64. Now, these are longer videos, so you're gonna see the bigger difference where in comparison to the next set of videos uh, with 6K, they are shorter clips. And these are 29 second clips. I've done an H.265 and an H.264 format and basically what we see is after the xmp is enabled we do see a gradual decline when you get into the 3600 cl16 and then it kind of stabilizes so i couldn't test more than 37 33 because my ships wouldn't go up to 3800 on a stable level uh, so this is the highest i can go with my uh, set of chips now when you're looking at any kind of ram you're going to be able to buy RAM at a different price point based on the speed and the size and the cycle. So if you're looking at buying something at 32 CL16, you're probably going to be able to get up to 3600 CL18 on most motherboards. The idea here is, again, what kind of motherboard do you have in there, what chipset, and how are you able to actually be able to achieve 
a higher overclocking without having any issues arise. So some people might be able to overclock right up to 3,800, depending on the type of RAM they buy and the motherboard they have. Looking at the two minute and 48 second clips, uh, what we see on the 6K.265 format is an immediate drop of about 20 seconds. Now, on the other hand, when we were looking at the .264, it's a whole minute. And, and this is like a lot, if you think about it. And I know this average and I tried different clips and, and, and it was similar. As we continue though, it starts to stabilize right when we get up to 3,600. And again, do I think you would see something better at 3,800? I do believe so. Um, I think that I was having some caching issues, if anything, to be at 1215, but I think it would have been uh, about four seconds. I saw it be four seconds a couple of times, but sometimes it was like uh, 18 uh, seconds. So I averaged that out. Now, the idea here is that once we drop over 3,600, we're kind of clicking into the same values. And for me, I, I just don't don't see the difference here it's negligible so if you were again to buy a 3200 chip and then overclock to a 3600 whether it's 18 or 16 your benefits are going to be high no matter what and do you really need to go spend the 3600 uh sale 18 or sale 16 money it's based on your budget so if you want to be you know more secure that you're going to get to 3600 then buy it and be done with it. And most motherboards will be able to overclock to 3600. Now again, it's time, energy, and money. You gotta put this into perspective when you're purchasing anything, because at the end of the day, you gotta ask yourself, you know, am I gonna be doing this on a regular every time I have an issue? And am I willing to do that? Some people are just willing to just spend the money and be done with it. Others, like me, I'm like, man, I should have just done the 3200, would have saved myself a couple hundred bucks and life would be beautiful in my head, but I mean, at the time that I, I was building this computer, there was no information out there for me. So I've been doing the test and this is why basically I'm doing the test. So as we compare back to the thought process of the 4K versus the 6K, uh, I, all I'm seeing here is a significant drop at 3600. So if I was the type of person that was gonna just buy the 3600, I would be going for a 3600 CL18 or CL16. I can always overclock and get to the CL16 uh, from a CL18. Now, going from a 3200 to CL16 to a 3600 CL18 or sorry, 16, this would be a little bit higher of a jump and a little bit harder for the system. But, um, you know, again, I bought this 3600 CL18 and I can't tell you how happy I am I am happy and I did save quite a bit of money because of the chips I bought and when I bought them and the sale they had and so on and so forth now in my opinion 128 gigabytes is more than enough for everybody and and, and personally um, 64 gigabytes will be enough for most people. I think if you're going for 128 gigabytes, you're putting your mindset into that security for the future and you're looking at it and you're saying to yourself, okay, let's take a step back here. Will I be doing more work as we move along in lines of um, having more softwares open, the timeline's getting more complicated and I'm, I'm consistently trying to be as efficient as possible. If that's the case then go spend the money because then it turns into an investment. For me personally, when I look at the 6K and the, I have a you know busy timeline, you can see the uh, you can see that the RAM being used. It's, it's just shooting up. Now, does it recycle 64 gigabytes? Of course it does. And you're gonna be fine with that. However, the idea of being able to have everything open and work the way you regularly work with maybe 4K or 1080p, that's where the difference comes into play. Now with 4K, you do see the usage uh, come up whenever like certain functions happen, similar to 6K. And then once everything is used, it comes back down to 29 gigabytes. So 64 is plenty for a lot of people. Now with 6K, I do see this usage of more RAM uh, on a more ongoing basis. So uh, take it for what it's worth from that perspective. If you are thinking, hey, in the next year or two, I'm gonna be using a lot of 6K, then yeah, you need to think about it more logically and go for that 128. Um, and I, what I would be doing is looking at my motherboard, asking myself, hey, what is the probability of me overclocking? Do I want to be doing that or not? And then if that's the case, then go to the 3600s. But if you're going to look at it and say, whatever, I'm just going to go for 3200, there's no big change. Like it's not, it's not significant enough to be like, oh my God, my life has changed and everybody doesn't understand how awesome it is. It's not like that. Like, and this is literally, if you go to 3200, you won't know the difference. I mean, there are people that are still running their systems without XMP enabled, and they're like, oh my God, it's super fast. 
you know, I'm banging my head against the wall, but they're like, oh my God, super fast. And then I tell them about this and then they try it. And then they're like, oh my God, this changes everything because there is a significant increase. But other than that, 3,200, 3,600, 3,800, when it comes to these softwares, you're not going to find a difference and you're not going to be like game changing. Okay. So being said that, let's answer a question from somebody who asked me, well, why is this occurring? And I have answered this in different ways in different videos. I'm going to be very specific here. The idea is very simple. All these softwares are continually being updated. And as they get updated, they're adjusting based on what is being used by the current technology by creators. So the new Ryzen chips came out, the new graphics cards came out so now they start to adjust different functions or programming them so that they can take advantage of the new hardware that's coming out at the same time you're looking at it and saying well you know why is it that not all softwares are taking advantage of different features of these different um uh, hardware changes that are that have come our way well it's, it's, it's money and and the idea would be that if you have a function that you have coded into something like premiere pro you need to pay people to update that function and a lot of times it's not worth it so even though you would want to be looking at premiere pro working you know so much faster if it was uh more multi-core uh intuitive I would just say, or programmed for multi-core, we would have a way better software, but it wasn't programmed that way. And a lot of these functions are single core. So if it's single core, it's gonna operate, do its thing, and then boom, next. And that's what we're seeing. And as time goes on, you start to see this change occur where more of the CPU is being used for more of the functions. And now as we go into the next like decade, we're gonna see a lot of switches happen because I can really see I'd, I'd be getting behind the bandwagon to make more software that is light for both the um, online world and your desktop and I can see them doing that for mobile and all this and that because I've been seeing it get better and better so we're going to see a lot of changes things are happening there are other softwares that uh, other people are using like DaVinci and all these uh, new like you know up and comers that you would say um, and there's some great software out there but the question is what are the people you're working with working on and how are you going to collaborate with them for me most of the people are doing Premiere Pro and that's why I'm sticking with it I like to trade DaVinci maybe I'll try it not sure yet but at the end of the day I know with this computer I can do 6k I know I can go up to 8k um, I'm not going to try 8k with these RAM questions I think we got our answer and uh, the idea then just becomes you know uh, how do we move forward with the next purchase of upgrading say the video card and then looking at that cycle to continue my name is Nikos. Leave your questions, your comments, your concerns, discrepancies, all of that below. Of course, if you see a question you can answer from, uh, you know, another subscriber, then please answer it and uh, share this with somebody who uh, should be watching this before they uh, go buy RAM. Huh? Also, don't forget, check out these two videos up top.